the impact uh, is disproportionately felt in impoverished and minority communities. So I am not a fan of these new anti-gun units proposed and implemented by the mayor. How have gun laws changed recently in New York and how are they going to be enforced? We're going to talk to attorney David Jason Cohen about that on today's Ask the Lawyer. David, thanks for joining us. Nice to be here, Tom. David, recently the New York State Legislature passed updated gun laws in the state budget. Can you explain to us what the changes are? Well, there are quite a few changes. I'll hit the highlighted ones, or, or as a criminal defense attorney, sort of the lowlights, right? They have reduced the amount of weapons necessary for the criminal sale of a firearm presumption. They have changed in-home possession of a firearm from a misdemeanor to a felony. They have criminalized the purchase of firearm parts, not even a whole firearm, but buying particular parts from gun manufacturers. Uh, they've increased the penalties for particular uh, gun-related crimes, and they have expanded the assault white rifle definitions, assault weapon definitions. So they have taken gun laws that were in the past one level, increased them, and made it easier for you to be charged with higher level felonies. And the third part is that they have increased the penalties and your exposure to incarceration for particular gun crimes. Now, something else I want to ask you about, Mayor Eric Adams has launched with these neighborhood safety teams or anti-gun units. What's your opinion on these, these groups? You know, each mayor tries to do something. One time it was street crime units, now it's anti-gun units. In essence, I think that they are just a political stunt. I don't believe that it does anything to get more guns off the street. I do think that the impact uh, is disproportionately felt in impoverished and minority communities. So I am not a fan of these new anti-gun units proposed and implemented by the mayor. Well, and another argument is, is they're actually just making low-level arrests. Is that what you're, you're thinking too? It is. It is. What they do with these units is they put them in particular neighborhoods. They're plainclothes officers. They walk around and try to blend in. And the idea is somehow they are going to uh, magically figure out who has a gun and where the gun is stashed and how they can get the gun. Uh, what it really does is it gives these uh, plainclothes officers a, a new weapon to go and speak to people that they don't like the way that they look and maybe they're wearing a do-rag or maybe they have too many tattoos or too many piercings or they are hanging out on a street corner for too long or, or drinking a beer, God forbid, outside. And these law enforcement officers go up to them and they feel more empowered, law enforcement, to speak to, to question, to stop and frisk, which has been shown to be unconstitutional here in New York. So I agree with the notion that these new units are actually dressed up to be those that will infringe upon more civil rights of people in the community. And these are not police officers. So what happens if you're stopped by one of these people from the anti-gun you know, unit and they want to search you. Do you have to submit to that search? You do not have to submit to that search. Uh, you never have to submit to a search of your person and you never should submit to a search of your person. If a law enforcement officer stops you, you must give them your name. You don't have to give them anything else. Uh, I always tell my clients or people who are not my clients but ask me questions, what should I give and what should I tell police officers? You should always tell them no, you're not interested in allowing them to go further in their search of your person or your effects. And you should tell them if they want to do anything that I want a lawyer. Those are magical words and you should always say them when questioned or stopped by police officers. Now, what do you do if you're actually arrested as a result of one of these anti-gun teams? What, what's the next step that you should take if this happens? If, you, if you're arrested in New York State, you should contact the criminal lawyers at Cohen, Foreman, Barone, and we can assist you. You should not speak to the police. So many people who are stopped, even if they're not doing anything that they think is illegal, they think that they can talk their ways out, talk their way out of an arrest. I've been doing this for 26 years. The police stop me. I don't think I can talk myself out of an arrest. So I don't know how somebody who's never had interactions before believe that they can. Do not talk to the police. Tell them those magic words that I want a lawyer. Any word that you say to them, remember, 
what you say can and will be used against you with the emphasis about will be used against you. So what you should do once you're arrested is say, I want a lawyer, and that automatically invokes particular constitutional rights on your behalf, and the police must stop questioning you. And the last question here, just getting back to the anti-gun units here. This seems like a really slippery slope, and it could be like some constitutional violations going on here. If you're just getting stopped on the street because they don't like the way you look, it's, it's getting... I think that... Sorry, Tom, please. No, no, I was just going to say that. What's your thoughts on that? You've kind of told us, but it's an interesting concept here. Well, we had a few years ago the stop and frisk was outlawed as unconstitutional here in New York, and it is a slippery slope. Anytime that you give law enforcement, look, there are great law enforcement officers out there, but if you give people the right to search other people on the streets, it is a slippery slope. What else are they going to be allowed to if there's a particular uh, crime that people don't like to see and they are offended by? Are we then going to have the anti-forgery units out there? Are we going to have the anti-theft units out there? It's just giving law enforcement rules beyond what's stated by statute or in the Constitution the rights to search people who otherwise are simply minding their business. Well, David, just a fascinating discussion, and we really appreciate your expertise. Thank you for talking with me, Tom. Today was a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. And that's going to do it for this episode of Ask the Lawyer. My guest has been David Jason Cohen. If you want to ask David a question about your situation, call the number you see on the screen. Thanks for watching. I'm Tom Mustin for Ask the Lawyers.